Firstly, we just, uh, you know, we definitely want to hear about where you guys are from, how you got into sports, which is a big thing. I, everybody here, I know, has a passion for sports, either in playing it or, you know, family members working in sports, being around cities uh, that have big sports teams and being fans, and then that kind of translates into a career. Um, I know both of you, you know, had aspirations of being in sports while you were in college and kind of work towards that. But uh, either one of you, yeah, Sean, you can go first. Um, I know I know you were a, a baseball player, if, if I recall correctly, from some of the research that I've done. You know, when did you first get the inkling that you would want to go into sports? And I know you were also an athlete and then went on to be a coach uh, too. So. You know, take us through that process of having the idea, being an athlete, and then translating that into like what your next step would be. Sure, yeah, and thank you for having us, by the way. It's, it's fun to, to come and see students and uh, be on campus, and a lot of times we get stuck in kind of the athletic village or the Fawcett Center and, and don't get this way, so uh, we appreciate you inviting us first off. So, yeah, a little bit of back, uh, my background. So I'm originally from Massachusetts, um, so again, I'm not a Midwest guy. Um, grew up, born and raised in Massachusetts, spent uh, my undergrad and my grad uh, degree uh, both in, in the state of Massachusetts. So I kind of have a different path and I think every speaker that you have come up here speak to you and Janine's going to have a very different path than I had. Um, again, I was, I was a former Division three student athlete, baseball player. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you, when I went to college, um, sports wasn't my career goal. Uh, it, it was an interesting path. I, I, uh, and I tell this story and hopefully it doesn't get too long, but my career goal when I went into college, I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to own Dick's Sporting Goods. I wanted to open my own Dick's Sporting Goods. I'm from a really, really small town and we had one little mom and pop shop that sold sporting goods. And I'm like, this just isn't good enough. Um, again, as an athlete, I always wanted the latest uh, apparel, the latest gear, the latest cleats, the latest glove, uh, all that stuff. And I just couldn't find it at this store. So my passion was, all right, I'm going to school, I'm gonna be a business degree major, uh, which I was, I was a business administration undergrad, <clears throat> and my goal was to, to uh, open and run uh, my own Dick's Sporting Goods. Uh, my sophomore year, after two years of baseball, uh, my athletic director at the time uh, at my school approached me, because I was thinking about transferring schools. I wanted a better baseball experience uh, at a different school, um, so I was thinking about transferring. So my athletic director came and said, have you ever thought about being an athletic director? I'm like, to be honest, I have no idea what you do. All I do is I see you around practice every once in a while. I see you in dugouts for games. Um, I have no idea what you do. So I kind of told him my career path and my goals and what I wanted to do. And he coaxed me in and said, stay here at, at this school. Come be my intern for the summer. Learn about the business a little bit. And if you like it, stay here, finish your degree, I'll help you get into grad school and I'll help get your career started. So it was, it was an idea I never thought about. I pondered it for a few days and I'm like, all right, I'm all in. I absolutely fell in love working in the athletics department my sophomore, this, between my sophomore and junior year of college. And I haven't looked back. Um, so I've been in athletics ever since uh, 2001. Um, yeah, again, obviously an athlete before that, but my career really started between my sophomore and junior year. Yeah, uh, yeah, I know Janine, I'll, I definitely want to hear uh, her path is even more unique in terms of where she is now. Uh, and, you know, physical training and athletic training is a big part of that, I believe. So yep. tell me about uh, that and how you got into, you know, sure. athletic training and then where that took you from there. Yeah, so again, I'll be like Sean and uh, thank you guys for the invite. It's always nice to um, have some conversations with students that sometimes I'm like, I don't, there are days I would say, I don't know that you want my job. There are other days you probably do. <laughs> uh, so my background, I am uh, from Western Ohio, I'm from Salina, so way on the Western side. Um, and I went to Ohio State, um, I went to physical therapy school there. So uh, at that point in time, PT was actually an undergrad major, so I have a bachelor's degree in PT. So my first job, I would have never told you that I do what I do today. So my first job was working in a hospital um, as a physical therapist. 
Um, always like sports, but very active in sports. I'm actually the back end a little bit, or the start, I guess, uh, about five years after Title IX. Um, so I'm somebody that, um, I can remember my first year in high school, I was actually, um, our girls teams were actually playing in the same conference as the boys, and that was the first time they integrated um, those. So really active in sports, loved it, but to go into PT school, I was in class from about eight in the morning till five at night, so there was no way to kind of piggyback that in, even though I, I actually had some recruiting offers to go places. I just chose to go to the PT school. Um, so I worked for two years. Um, got tired of taking care of sick people. Um, loved it. Loved working with people. Um, and had an opportunity to go back to grad school. So um, I went to grad school at the University of North Carolina. Um, and so I, I did an advanced master's in physical therapy as well as doing my athletic training. Um, and so from 1987, I've actually been in Division I athletics. So um, I worked at the University of North Carolina for nine years and I came back to Ohio State in 1996. So I'm probably 34 years in uh, for uh, working in college athletics. Um, very appreciative of my, I spent probably 20 years uh, working in a um, athletic training in a PT role uh, in both of those two, both here at Ohio State and North Carolina. Um, and then in 2007, I really moved over into an administrative side. I started um, really in our sport performance team, building that up, and then I added um, sport administration, and then I added more duties throughout the path. And so uh, for me now, really, I, I guess, manage um, anything that's kind of internally facing to our student athletes. Um, so that's our sport performance team, um, liaison on our academic side, our compliance team, our sport administration team. Um, so that's uh, for me, but my healthcare comes in handy. Um, just because um, I spent a lot of time working with coaches, a lot of times, a lot of time working with student athletes, so I'm pretty understanding of the tension points that are there. But then I use the same skills. Um, it's just instead of solving a physical issue with the body, it's just working through situations. So. Yeah, and uh, that's you know it's interesting. I, I want to hear about how both of you ended up here specifically at Ohio State. And I guess I'll go back to you first, uh, Janine. Um, you know, coming from North Carolina, to coming to Ohio State in a athletic training role, um, you know, how do you go from that into now being in a, an administrative role? What was that thought process for you? And, you know, how does that factor in, you know, there's people here in this audience that have wide range of, uh, of interests, people that are deciding between being in uh, like a, a medical profession or wanting to go into business, you know, uh, you've kind of seen both sides. So where did that change kind of happen for you? Was it like more just in the course of your career happened or was it something that you always had a goal of doing was being in there? No, I can't say that just, I had a goal of doing that. I happen to be in a place where Gene is somebody who recognizes people. He doesn't put people in a box. Uh, I could have been at another institution and they wouldn't view me in the same light because I didn't have the traditional path of having a sport administration degree, an MBA, you know, what people tend to look at. Um, so it was one that I spent 20 years, I was called socialized medicine, um, 18 to 22 year old, pretty healthy kids, right, that you're dealing with, um, probably treated over a thousand ACLs at one time. Um, and so at some point in your career, you either continue along special tracks where you get really good at that, or you may want to take that knowledge and then go broad and go wide. And that's where I kind of was. I, I, I needed a new challenge. One of the beauties of working I think in a college environment is every day is different. And I worked in a hospital setting, I worked pretty set time, and so I just had different patients. You know, the patients would change, but really my schedule was pretty much the same as far as um, the patients that you saw. So in college athletics, Sean and I would say we never know what each day is going to bring us. Um, so I like that. I like challenge, I like to do different things. <coughs> the hardest part for me in walking away in a one-on-one -on -one interaction that you have with student athletes all the time is would I still have that? Um, because uh, that's very fulfilling to, to be able to work with student athletes. Um, and so I was wondering in, in walking in, moving into an administrative role, would I still feel that? So I had to create that space a little bit, um, but I still have that. Um, and so, um, you know, it's one of the fun parts of my job is to actually see people come back. I now have the children that come back. And, you know, so it's, it's just very rewarding um, to be able to see that. So that was kind of how I was ready for a change. Um, and just use skills in a different way. Yeah. Sean, I know you've uh, gone through different changes in your career as well. 
uh, working in the NFL uh, for the Dolphins and working at another institution, uh, Colgate, as well. Um, I want to hear from somebody that's been at the professional level in uh, operations uh, and then coming back into the realm of college athletics. Um, you know, Janine was talking about how she kind of made the decision where she loved the student athletes and she wanted to stay in that role uh, here at an institution. I, I know you've seen the professional side, you've seen the college side. What led you to each step in the way and you know what brought you back into college athletics you know I also definitely want to hear about your experience in the NFL as well so <clears throat> yeah so <clears throat> um, kind of going back to my undergrad I, I like I said I fell in love with college athletics uh, my so between my sophomore and my junior year <clears throat> and the AD at the time held true to his word and helped me get into grad school and really helped launch my career but there was something kind of deep down inside as a former athlete um, and again, I'm sure if there's any athletes in this room, like you always wanted to be a professional, right? Like there was always something in there. I can be a pro athlete if I work hard enough. Well, my playing career didn't pan out to, to have that, but there was still that desire to see what pro sports was like for me. So I went through and got my master's degree in athletic administration, which is very geared towards college athletics. But along the way, I made some contacts that had some um, pro sport uh, contacts as well. So I was able to kind of bridge those gaps and I wanted to give it a try. I knew if I was going to try it, I had to try it right out of school when I, my career was just getting started because if I had gone college athletics, I probably would have stayed there for life and never had this opportunity. So I decided I was going to try it. So I uh, got an interview, actually paid my own way down to Miami uh, for an internship um, and ended up hearing back. I, I interviewed and it took about three months to hear back. Ended up getting the job, so I took it. Uh, I moved to Miami, did not know anybody down there, um, but I just knew I was excited to be working in the NFL. It was great, being from Massachusetts, you got to tell all my friends, working in the NFL it was a glamorous thing, uh, an ego thing, it was really cool. So I, for an in, uh, I was an intern for an entire year. Uh, they ended up hiring me full time after that. Uh, again, I had some mentors that always said, you know, if you're gonna do a job, do it to the best of your ability, uh, make sure people notice you. Uh, so that's what I did. I spent an entire year as an intern making sure people noticed me. And it worked. I got hired full time. So I worked three years in the NFL, but each year <clears throat> I saw a little bit more of the business side of it. Um, and <clears throat> as a guy who loved college athletics, the business side kind of turned me off a little bit. So here's a, a prime example. I went into my boss after three years and I said, look, I'm living in Miami, Florida <clears throat> on a salary that I can barely live on. You, you keep saying you want to keep me. Is there any way I can get a promotion or a raise? And he, he looked me dead in the eye, and there's where the business side of it came in and said, man, he's like, we just don't have the budget to do it. We want to keep you, but if you left today, I'd have 200 people that apply for your job tomorrow. So again, straight to the business side of things. We're here, and our core values in athletics, the people, the tradition, and the excellence. Talk about the people. That wasn't a core value that I felt in the NFL. The other part of it I would say is, when you're in a pro sport, and I don't want to bash pro sports because I think there's a very cool aspect and a certain person will definitely thrive in it. For me, it was, in the NFL, there was 16 games a, a year. And you lived and died on the football team performing on the field. Every day, like Janine said, we have no idea what our jobs are gonna be like tomorrow. I can look at my schedule and I know what's on my schedule. That may not be what I do. In the NFL, you are just like a football player, your day is programmed. If you're a staff member, you know exactly what you're going to do on a Monday. Tuesday is an NFL mandated day off for the players, so you know what you're going to do that day to get ready to go. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of a home game. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of an away game. So I decided after that conversation that, all right, this just probably isn't for me. I need to get back to the passion that I had. Uh, and I spent a little time to actually transition from the NFL. Um, I got to know the players pretty well because my position in operations, I dealt with a lot of different uh, player side of things. So one of the football players knew I was ready to leave and he actually came and offered me a position at his foundation. So I got to work at uh, uh, the Jason Taylor Foundation. Jason uh, went to Akron uh, here in Ohio, just got inducted into uh, Canton uh, a few years ago. So um, I got to experience the other side of sports, which was the nonprofit charitable side of it, which I absolutely loved. But again, I always knew I wanted to get back into college athletics. I had that conversation up front with him and said, hey, this is just a bridge for me to help me fill in a couple of skills that I may not have, 
coming from the NFL, getting back into college athletics. So I did it for about a year and then transitioned and a, a position opened at Colgate, which is a small D1 school, uh, 25 sports up in New York. Um, and it was a perfect position for me. I loved it. And then as you kind of asked here, how do we kind of get to Ohio State? Long story, I'm sorry, I like to talk. Um, no problem at all, yeah. <clears throat> um, but a long story short, the, the reason why, so I was at Colgate for five years, and I love the NFL aspect of so many people being in the crowd, like the passion they love for their team. And Colgate was a little different. We had a football game, there was 3,000 people there. So I kind of was missing that excitement of fans being at games. So I'm like, how can I figure out a way to get both? Well, college athletics with all the sports, but I want the excitement of tradition and the logo means something and the you know, the history of everything that goes into that, that university. And I ended up at this place. So um, I think I'm in a pretty good spot with pretty good people around me. Um, as Janine talked about, our, our boss, Gene Smith, you know, we talk about our, our core values and the people he takes care of us. He puts us in, in good positions to be successful as administrators. Um, he talks about our career goals, what we want to do. Um, and again, that means something. Uh, so it's, uh, it was a long journey, but I'm excited where I am. Yeah, Diane. Some, somewhere like Ohio State, it's obviously one of the bigger schools in the country to begin with, and athletics being such a huge part of that. You know, you talk about the tradition and the excellence. We have a lot of uh, high achieving sports here. Um, you know, how does that on a day to day basis, you know, you being at one of the bigger schools in the country, how did that uh, draw you here specifically? Like, were, was there a search of other schools that you could have possibly gone to? And, um, you know, I definitely want to hear your guys' perspective on the, you know, different opportunities for s students here and just the importance of, you know, being at a place like this if you want to go into sports. Because I do think uh, I can speak for myself, but I know you guys have already touched on it. Some Ohio State is like, a place where they really value, you know, getting people where they want to go, you know, whether it's being a doctor or whether it is in sports business. So you guys are fortunate enough to be talking to the people that want to go into sports. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, just touch on that if, if you would mind. Um, unlike Sean, I'm a Buckeye. So I, I, I come from a family of Buckeyes. My husband's a Buckeye. My children have gone here. My sisters have gone here. My nieces and nephews have gone here. Um, I really wasn't born any place else. <laughs> so, so I, um, but I experienced it as a student and I knew the, what was here. Um, one of the things that I love about Ohio State, which is pretty unique, is um, and the Big Ten has, has much more of this flavor, is that we are a very broad-based program. So we have 36 <coughs> sports uh, that are here. So some of our counterparts at other conferences, they're carrying the minimum number, right? So they're carrying anywhere from 16 sports to 21 sports is, is, is the one way. Um, so I think it's really cool every day that we can provide what people would say is a football experience to our synchronized swimmers, to our crystal athletes <coughs> too. And that was something that for me really drove me back here is to um, really, in North Carolina is very similar, pretty broad, a very broad based program as well. Um, excellence there, excellence here. So I think the excellence was important. I think broad based programming uh, it was really important. This is home to me. This is something that being an alum is just was a goal for me to come back and serve because you always want to pay it forward in many cases. Um, so I think you have a great opportunity uh, that sits here. Um, and uh, I think we are a world-class academic institution. Uh, we provide really a world-class athletic uh, opportunities for our kids. So there's not a lot of places in the country that really can combine uh, the resources you have on all sides um, when you're here. So I, I can't emphasize enough so to, to please take advantage uh, of what's there um, because uh, Sean mentioned our people. The people we work with are amazingly talented. We said in a meeting yesterday with our sport performance team and the talent that's in that room is unbelievable, right? And the connections that they have. So if you are uh, somebody who comes in volunteers or interns or does something, those people that you're going to be working with, their contacts are nationwide. And who they can go and connect you with is a, a, a very great opportunity, I think, here at Ohio State. So, so and again, very different from Janine and I. 
<clears throat> I'm not a Buckeye. Um, I'll be honest. Uh, so I started, I think my, my anniversary was October 16th when I started. So I started at a unique time for an administrator. And we had a football game that weekend. And my wife, at the time, who was my, um, my girlfriend, um, went to Ohio State. So we moved from New York together. And, and she's like, you're going to love it. I'm not going to tell you about it. Like, I just want you to experience it. So my first football game, I'm walking down the sidewalk, and all these people are yelling, OH. And I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> so my wife's in there laughing and pointing at me because I'm having this experience, like an out-of-body experience, that she, she grew up here, was from Clintonville. Uh, so it was a unique experience. I came here because of the fit. So as an administrator, when I'm looking at my, what was it, looking at my career goals, this fit, fitted what I wanted to do. So there were uh, certain skills that I had that I knew I could benefit Ohio State. So, and I will say, I'll echo Janine, you have the, the opportunity here with our athletic department in the city of Columbus, with the amount of sports teams we have here, to make sure you're getting all the experiences for yourself. So I truly believe, I don't know if Janine can tell you it differently, but I truly believe I got hired at Ohio State because I had a certain skill set that they were looking for in a unique time. If I didn't have that skill, probably wouldn't be here today. I'll be very transparent. I applied for probably 20 other jobs that were less of a position role than I got Ohio State which was a different position, which is a higher position. So as you're going through the process, understand that you're gonna have the lows to get to a high. But again, I had a certain skill set that I brought with me from my past experience, from trying a bunch of different things, getting thrown into a bunch of different areas that fit here at Ohio State. So, and I still work with, with that skill set. You know, hockey is one of the sports we have here. It's a very unique skill set to know the sport of hockey, there's only you know, 63 Division I men's hockey programs and 38 or 39 women's hockey programs. I brought that skill set here that a lot of other applicants for this job didn't probably have. Uh, but again, it's getting that experience younger in your career and trying and see what you like and then gravitating to what you like. And I'll piggyback one other thing. So um, you asked the question of making the move from being a PT, AT to into an administrative role. So my experience was um, I was on a committee to hire a person. Gene was looking to bring somebody in um, to kind of run their combined two strength programs. And I can remember sitting with Heather Life, who's now the AD at Pitt, and with Michelle Willis, who's a long time deputy athletic director here at Senior Women's Administrator. And she, so they're like going through, and, and so I'm like, what do you guys want? I'm like, I'm going down this whole list of things. You can go this route, this route. Because we had a very diverse uh, pool uh, that were there. And I was really drilling down, like, you know, I was trying to help them narrow, like, what was their focus. And probably a, a day or two later, I got a call from Gene. And he said, he didn't tell me. This is very perfect. He said, Janine, Michelle's going to talk with you. She's pitching you an idea. I just want you to listen. So that's really how I moved into administration, was um, he changed his mind on how he wanted to, to build that sport performance team. Um, and he essentially went from going from somebody being on that interview committee to combine these two to being the person that was going to lead all, get all the units that are in there, from athletic training, nutrition, to strength and conditioning, like that. So to Sean's point, when he said you show up and you do your work every day, bring value, people will see you. So when he said, people need to know you, it's the work you do, your best job, your current job, and um, do, it, do it well and work hard. Um, don't be concerned about what your next job is. And, um, and my other favorite thing is every day is a job. And I, I can go down the list of Sean Ken, um, of students that I work with that I would hire, and I, we have hired, of interns that we would move up in a position and solely by how they show up every day. And so I think that's probably, if I could give one piece of advice, that would be <laughs> yeah. And be seen. You know, I, I'm not sure where the conversation will go and talk about this stuff, but be seen. You gotta be at things to, to be noticed. So you could be the, you know, the most amazing person in the world and be the hardest worker in the world, but if people don't see you, it's really hard to truly notice uh, what you're doing. So 
Uh, it's it, like these type of things. You guys are showing up to this. Like, these are opportunities where people like Janine, or last week, or two weeks ago, the assistant GM of the crew, people are seeing you. You're getting experience in this world, but again, people are also getting a chance to see you and, and be present, so that's huge. Yeah, that's phenomenal advice from both of you. And I, before we open it up, uh, I personally have a question, and uh, I think everybody in the audience is also gonna wonder this as they formulate their own questions. I definitely wanna hear, you know, explain your title at Ohio State now, and just a little bit of, uh, you know, how you represent Ohio State, not only here, in, inward, outward facing, as you, from the university, but I know both of you serve on a variety of committees uh, in the Big Ten and in the, in the NCAA. Um, so how does that, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, your title, and then, you know, just kind of what you do uh, sure. every day here? <clears throat> yeah, so my title is um, the executive, it's always so hard, like you gotta look up to remember and read it. Uh, the Executive Associate Athletic Director for Sport Administration. Um, my main roles are I oversee uh, five of our sports, so I get to work with um, five of our head coaches and our student athletes. Those programs are field hockey, men's soccer, men's ice hockey, women's gymnastics, and baseball. So that's the sport, perform uh, the sport administration side of it. And then the other side that I get to work with is uh, I get to work with our golf course operations, our two golf courses here on campus, Scarlet and Gray. Uh, and we have 855 members out there uh, and 30 full-time staff. Uh, we get to work with our equipment operations, uh, which is eight full-time staff. Uh, we also work with the product side of that um, in our Nike contract. So I oversee the Nike contract for the entire university uh, as part of my equipment, re uh, equipment responsibilities. And I oversee our ticket operations. So we have 14 full-time staff members and uh, that's about a $66 million intake budget uh, through ticket, ticket sales. Um, and then if you talk about national uh, and Big Ten groups, um, yeah, that's where we get to, you know, we get to showcase what we do here at Ohio State. I love being on committees with other peers and, and talking about what we do here because, you know, bluntly say it, we're just simply the best. Um, and, you know, it's the flattery part when you throw out something uh, like, hey, here's how we do it at Ohio State. And then six months later, that school copied it. Uh, so again, being able to be on committees and really showcase what our coaches and our student athletes and our amazing staff here are doing uh, is one of the best things uh, about my role, for sure. Um, so my title is I'm the Senior Deputy Director of Athletics. So I essentially am the number two person in athletics. Uh, so Gene, if Gene has an issue or he's gone, then I'm, I'm, the, I'm the next one down the chain. So um, so, for me, I uh, also have a title of what's called a senior woman administrator. So, in NCAA, everybody, every institution has to designate an SWA is what they call us uh, in that title. And we're part of the NCAA governance structure. So, when you look at people who can vote on NCAA um, legislation, on NCAA actions, it's the athletic director, it's a faculty athletics representative, and it's, uh, uh, or it's the SWA. So it's more on the government side of both the Big Ten and for the NCAA. So we sit on a joint group. Um, I do at the uh, Big Ten level, so I'm um, a member of that team. I'm a member of um, the Sport Management Council, the SNC um, of the Big Ten. So we do a lot of the scheduling to officiating fees to all those types of things that really govern things that happen in our conference. Um, from an NCAA perspective, I've been the committee chair. I uh, was a four-year, you know, four-year terms on NCAA committees. Um, so I uh, was four years on the men's volleyball NCAA committee. So we essentially were running the championships. We select the teams. Um, I'm right now, I'm finishing up my fourth year on the NCAA women's volleyball championship. Um, and I will put our plug in. Columbus is the host um, in December. So uh, I hope our team is in it <laughs> as well. We're doing very well. Um, so that's one of the other things. So uh, again, that helps me a lot because you, you get to interface across the country with lots of other administrators. Um, and it comes back to me as far as how we help our team schedule and, and really best position themselves um, for um, getting into a, an NCAA tournament. Um, I work with seven of our sport teams. So I work with our two lacrosse teams. I work with two volleyball teams. I work with rowing. 
uh, women's soccer and women's ice hockey. Um, and then as I mentioned, um, I'm not as good as Sean in knowing how many people <laughs> report. I just put a presentation together for a class. Okay. I got to talk to him Monday. Okay. Monday. Um, so our sport performance team, which is in the conferences, our athletic trainers, our strength staff, our nutrition staff, um, our sports psychologists, um, our, uh, our contracts that we have with our physicians, um, our academic staff, I'm the latest on them. They actually report outside of athletics, but um, I work with that group. I work with our compliance staff. I work with our <coughs> administrators. Um, so our sport administration team. Um, so I probably have 100 plus um, that probably come up through, through that. So that's kind of my day to day. And I'll, so I'll just add on to that, just because I was putting that presentation together. Um, Gene always tells us, you know, as administrators in the sport administration program, we are the athletic directors for those programs. Mm -hmm. So in, in this presentation that I was building for the class on Monday, uh, what I did was I kind of broke down my athletic department, what I oversee in my role. So talk about how many employees that directly report up through me, talk about a budget that directly uh, reports <coughs> up through me, uh, some square footage, some acreage of buildings and land that I oversee. Um, and you compare it. So, I mean, I've been at a small school, Division I school, Colgate University, 25 sports. Uh, we had 570 student athletes. We had 100 employees. Their total budget there was $20 million back when I was there. Currently here at Ohio State, I think I oversee 76 employees. Um, I have five direct sports here. And the budget that I oversee, if you take tickets out of that, um, again, I haven't added tickets in because that's a new role for me. I have, if you add the Nike contract in and the amount of dollars that we get from that every year, I have like a $33 million budget that uh, comes up through me. So even though I only oversee five sports here, I, have, I oversee a larger budget than the entire athletic department budget and about the same number of employees. So as I'm going out to interview for AD jobs, that's how I sell myself. So Gene has put us in a position to be successful if we want to be ADs, to go out and tell people, here's why I deserve to be your athletic director. Um, and again, that's part of that presentation. That's the only reason why I know those numbers. Yeah, I'm like, no, I just, yeah, no, I just the top of my head. I don't study my organ. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's great. And yeah, I, I wouldn't expect you to have those, but I'm glad you did yeah. have the <laughs> reference uh, for all of us here. Um, I think at this point, I, I'm going to open it up for everybody else uh, to ask questions. And I want you can, if you wouldn't mind running that mic to the back and just keep sitting back there in case you can somebody back there if they can hear them. So um, if anybody has a question uh, for both or for one or the other, just clarify. But they'll both uh, have a fair opportunity to answer all questions here. And Cole, you can start. Oh, uh, Sorry, Cole, if you can just say name, major, and your class, that'd be awesome. Sure. Hello, my name is Cole Tesh. I am a freshman and I'm a finance major. You both obviously have a lot of responsibilities, and you both touched on how your day to day was very different. Um, can you touch on what your most memorable career moment you were last day today? championship, uh, which again, if you follow hockey at all, being in a conference with uh, Michigan, Minnesota, Wisconsin, 
uh, they're just, you know, they are the elite of, of college hockey. So uh, winning that regular season championship actually up on the team up Norris ice uh, was a really cool special moment for our student athletes and our coaches. Uh, so that was, that was probably my athletic moment. And then the secondary moment for me is not a specific moment, <clears throat> but it's a reoccurring moment. So for me, every time a student athlete comes back uh, and seeks us out to have a conversation and tell us about um, you know, marriage or an engagement or kids or a new job or something that just says, like, I would not be in this position without Ohio State. Uh, just gives me goosebumps every time. You know, we just had a, a women's soccer player who worked at a women's soccer program um, come back maybe last week. Um, and again, just back for the football game and she's, you know, seeking us out. Just finished her law degree, got hired uh, in a law firm and she wanted to let us know that. So that's that moment for me where I didn't get that in the NFL. You know, it was that moment of this is why I'm back in college athletics because I need that. Um, I need that. When our days are stressful, um, I actually have a, a folder in my dr in my uh, file cabinet that's like a good day folder, smile. Uh, smile folder, yeah, those type of things. Because there's a lot of bad days where a student athlete comes back and tells you about an amazing experience that they just had, it makes it all different. All right, uh, yeah, I'll go in the front here first, and then after uh, he gets it, the next person can keep their hand raised, and Emily can find them with the mic, so it'll be just a quick transition. But you can go ahead. Okay. Uh, my name is Grant Lee. I'm a sports industry major. I'm working here. And I'm going to be in that class one day. So Very cool. All right. So All right. I was just wondering, you know, looking at the typical of you, um, in that class, we kind of reviewed like, the current NCAA government structure. And I was just wondering how you guys currently feel about it. And you think maybe in the future that we might be able to be a little bit more of a student type of voice and get more votes. Because I don't particularly remember. Not much to add besides I think um, what we, we've known college athletics, me and I, for 20 and 30 years. Um, it's not going to look like that in 20 or 30 years. So it's going to take a little while to get to a different structure, but it's going to be different. Uh, we've seen the past five years alone, 10 years, uh, just how quickly we are starting to move things. Uh, and it's becoming a quicker process. So. Um, I would say one of the hardest parts, you'll hear this on Monday as part of my presentation, like one of the top three hardest parts of our jobs is staying nimble. And again, staying ahead of the curve. Like what's coming next? Because we have to prepare. We can't just wait for that to get voted on and all right, it's going into effect October 1st. If, it, if you aren't prepared for that October 1st, a year in advance, you're, you're not gonna be successful. So hardest part, of, one of the hardest parts of my job, and I'm sure Janine, I don't wanna speak for it, but, is, is just being ahead of the curve and that far ahead and trying to forecast what's going to happen. And, and I think it's going to be hard to forecast what's going to happen structure-wise here coming next year. Good question. All right. Uh, 
Uh, my name is Gary Crusher, and I'm also a finance major. And a question uh, for Sean. I was kind of wondering, um, you said your athletic director at your school approached you. I was kind of just curious as to why you think he reached out to you directly. And then with your internship with the Dolphins, what experiences can you point to as to why you think you got that internship? Or, yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess just like why you, why you think you got it, whether it was experiences or just how you came off in an interview. Sure, yeah. <clears throat> um, so the first question, why my athletic director approached me, um, I was thinking about leaving school. So I was a prominent baseball player. Uh, I was a catcher, so a specific position. Uh, and they didn't want to lose me. You know, I don't want to sound arrogant or whatever, but he, he didn't want to lose me for the baseball program. Um, I was a, a local kid. I went, the school I went to was in my hometown. Uh, so again, it would have been kind of, not that press, but it just wouldn't have looked great if I left. Uh, so he wanted to keep me there, and he offered me this opportunity, and, and that's why he approached me. I knew him just from, again, he was around baseball practice a lot. We only had 10 sports at, at my school. Um, so again, some of the athletes in, in our ID kind of knew each other from different things. Um, so that's why, it was a unique experience where I was thinking about leaving. I had already applied to a different school, uh, got accepted, and, and paid my admission. Um, so he was trying to take a last ditch effort to, to keep me there and it worked. Uh, I'm glad I stayed, to be honest with you. I actually uh, had a great baseball career, and then obviously, you know, off the field was, was fantastic. Um, in, in terms of um, your second part of the internship with the Dolphins, what was the, the question going I'm really oh. just curious as to, like, what experiences you wanted to in getting that, or any yeah. sort of interview, just kind of, how do you think you got that? Yeah, that's a good question. So I think I brought, um, a unique, unique experience to that where um, I kind of put a lot on my plate um, as I kind of finished my playing career. Um, I worked in the athletic department. I worked in our intramural department. Um, I did some off the field stuff with some baseball and youth in the community. Uh, and then as I went to grad school, I was a GA in athletics there, but I was also a baseball coach and did some other things. So I had so much on my resume uh, that kind of fit the operations role uh, that they were looking for. So I think it was a little bit of my experience and I targeted. So the, the application process for the Dolphins was you had to let them know what area you were interested in. And I could have just said all of them, but I was very specific on this one role because I knew my skill set met that. So I didn't have to get passed around by a bunch of different people. I was only on the desk of the people that I wanted to be with because I knew I had that skill set and I think that mattered a little bit. I will piggyback just on how you get noticed. So when I was in North Carolina, um, I was a grad student down there, so I was a licensed TP. I, had, I hadn't even taken my athletic training certification, and there was a position that opened up for a full-time position on my staff. And I always say I got hired because I made heel and lace pads. Um, does anybody know what a heel and lace pad is? Okay, how many people have their ankle day in here? Okay, you know those things that go in the front of your ankle and the back of your ankle? Guess what, somebody has to make those, right? So I was a grad student, I was a PT, and I would literally, every day with our undergrad students, I would sit down and put skin lube on and make them steal on my steps. I had graduate school classmates that that was below them. They were not going to do it. And so people see that and notice that, right? And so if you're willing to go the extra mile, even if it's not your job, um, people will notice that. And again, I, I think I mentioned too, like I, I got the interview and you know, I applied and uh, I got the phone call like, yep, we'd like you to come down and next week, Thursday. I'm like, okay, you guys fly down or anything? They're like, oh no, you, you just gotta come. I was like, okay, thank you. Um, and I, I literally, I'm like, okay, I gotta fly down. So I, I flew down and during the interview process, they're like, you know, like, oh, it says you're from Massachusetts. You know, who do you know here? I'm like, I, I don't know anybody. So I had to go through the story of like, I'm just standing in a hotel, literally had a 45 minute interview and I flew myself down during spring break. I had a little bit of time off from baseball. I literally just flew myself down. And again, that came up in the interview. I didn't want to bring it up, but they were kind of like, hey, your resume says Massachusetts. Like, are you staying with somebody? Are you, are you, you know, working in schools down here? And it just came up and I think that was impressionable as well. So be, be, be willing to take a risk on yourself. Uh, if you want it that bad, sometimes it's going to cost you a little bit. Uh, and it's the same thing throughout your career. And I always kind of say this, uh, when, when you're looking at your career, you can't look at a career as kind of a rock wall. You know, you just cut or you just a ladder, you just climb up straight up. You have to look at it like a rock wall. 
you have to go a little bit sideways, maybe you have to go backwards to truly get up. And that was a moment where man, I had my master's degree and I'm going to apply for an internship with the Dolphins and I got to fly myself down. That was a little bit of an ego check as well. Um, but again, I bet on myself and work. I'm nervous. Hi, my name is Chloe Swan. I'm a software operations management major. Um, this is more so a question for Sean. I'm currently exploring nonprofit sports as a career path, and I was wondering if you kind of stumbled upon it. Um, what do you think would be a more deliberate approach to get your foot in the door? Uh, good question. Um, volunteering, getting that experience, and being around, I think, are the only things that I could I could say is. Um, you got to have passion for the nonprofit world. It's it's not a glamorous lifestyle. It's um, it's it's hard. So know what you're getting into first, um, and then just be prepared for whatever that role is. So whatever you're looking to get into, um, get some experience and be ready for it. Um, I don't know if I have a great answer for it. It's it's hard. I, I kind of stumbled on it and didn't know I wanted to do it. Uh, I'll, I'll, it's hard to say, but I actually used it a little bit to build my own skills. And then when I got in it, I became so passionate about it. Um, so I think maybe reversing that for you, where you're passionate first and then go in building your skills from there. <coughs> it's a hard one to answer. Okay. Um, I'm Jessica Hall. I'm a sophomore at Northwestern University. And Teams that are playing in February. Um, it, was, it was an interesting time for sure. 
Yeah, and I would say, I kind of go back to something I said before, like we're such planners, like our, war, our world as administrators are trying to predict what's gonna happen in the next year to five years. You couldn't predict that. And I think it just, it all threw us a little bit of, uh, you know, the world's obviously in a, in a rough spot, but our world's in a rough spot, mentally and personally, we were all in a rough spot. Uh, Janine mentioned, like, again, probably the hardest conversation I've ever been, one of the hardest conversations I've ever been part of was uh, us on a Zoom with all of our student athletes telling them, like, we're shut down. That was really hard. Uh, the second hardest thing was having a conversation with the coaches. Uh, this is their livelihood. This is all they know, most of them. Uh, and again, it's, you know, they are living, breathing every single day doing their sport to try to make their student athletes better. Uh, again, recruiting got taken away, practices got taken away, and it, I, I, was really men, I was really worried mentally how our coaches were gonna get through it. Um, it was really hard. So, um, and then again, just sitting on Zoom and trying to figure out all the, all the things that we could do, not being in the room, like we're so good at what we do when we're together, uh, because again, we can share, we have those relationships, we can bounce things off of each other, it's really hard to do that in Zoom when you're trying to find a mute button. You know, like, hey, you're still on mute, let's go. Um, so it's really hard to, to uh, move forward over Zoom. Uh, I'll still never forget the day that we, we got the call from Gene. He was actually driving back from the Big Ten Championships for basketball. We were all in his office around his table trying to help make him make a decision for him because uh, he was on the road. So we all just called and put him on a speaker and said, Gene, here's our recommendation. Um, and here's what we think we need to do. I'll never forget that, sitting around that desk. And having to tell your boss, like, the recommendation in this room right now is to shut it down. This is the safest thing for our student athletes. It was really hard, because that's just against everything we do. All right, All right. Th this is gonna be the last question here. I'm sorry, we have to get out. There's another club that wants to come in is here. Is the math club coming back again? Oh, yeah, <laughs> different club. Yeah, right. coming back for a second. Hi, so I'm a last, I'm a sophomore finance major. So my question to both of you is, you guys touched on things that you tried when you've done some like networking, you know, saving out, et cetera. So uh, like, if you're going through this process again, like, to where you got today, is there anything you look back to, oh, I wish I would have done this differently, or, you know, something that you might regret that kind of your ability to do more? Uh, to be honest, no. Uh, um, so I've had, I always tell people when I, when I speak, I've had the perfect career trajectory and it's, it's so weird. You know, it doesn't usually happen for, for most people this way, but every step of the way has just kind of worked out for me. Um, I, I would say, I mean, um, I go back to reiterate where you gotta take chances on yourself. Like I've stepped outside the box a lot for myself um, and, it's, and it's worked. It's, I've figured out how to make it work, but um, I just challenge everybody to, to figure out their passion. I figured out my passion after that year that I really loved college athletics and I really loved this niche of college athletics. So I kept working at that niche. Um, but you gotta find that, you know, and again, you're all in a, in a position. I'll, I'll put a plug in right now too, and then I'll let Janine talk. We are looking for student help in athletics. So if any of you are looking for a job for student athletics, reach out to us. We will put you in touch with somebody and probably have a job here pretty quickly. And okay, we have some processes HR wise, but this is your opportunity. You know, like I, I work with our ticket office, I work with our equipment room, and I work with our golf courses. Maybe you're interested in one of those, or maybe you're not. You don't know you could be interested until you do it. So reach out, find those, go work in those areas, check it off while you're a freshman or a sophomore. Okay, I don't like equipment. I gotta try something else. So, but for my career, I've been pretty blessed. So. I would say it's a great question. Um, I think um, for me, it's more learning about things that aren't in your field and how do those translate back. This last year taught us that we had to be so nimble and athletics got turned on its head and if all you knew was athletics, you were not going to find your path forward. So those of you that are in business, what else may be applicable to you that you can take and learn? Uh, be a reader. Um, I'm a voracious reader. I read a lot. I read. I was in the medical field. It took me too long, I think, to start reading some other types of things. So I think you have to be able to understand what's working in one space may work in yours, but you don't know that if you're so intimately focused just on the you know, everything you can in your own space. Okay. Yeah, uh, 
we, we have to wrap up here, but thank you guys so much uh, for coming and speaking to us. We're really thankful for it. Let's give you guys a